and welcome to the next episode of 31 Nights of Horror. I'm joined today by the usual Dan and Tony again. It's coming quite regular now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Today we are reviewing The Conjuring and this is day 19? 19. 19. Day 19. Yeah. Off um, to you. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, um, we start off with two people who go on a, they seem to be one psychic, one's kind of part of the ghost thing, and they're discussing a doll um, that keeps moving around someone's apartment. Then we get introduced to a family who move into a house, which turns out to be haunted. Um, and a load of creepy stuff goes on, um, and obviously they get the two people from the beginning to come in and help after some strange things goes on, like their dog gets killed, birds flying into the house. Random um, bruises. Yeah, random bruises, um, seeing certain stuff, that sort of thing. They come in um, and after investigating, it turns out that the mother has been possessed and that she's going to kill one of the children because apparently that's what a ghost in the house does. It's supposed to be all the children, that. No, it's just the one she grabs, doesn't she? She grabs yeah. two. Is it two? Yeah. Yeah, all right, two. Um, and then we get an exorcism um, by the two ghosty people um, paranormal investigators <laughs> paranormal investigators um, and then they exercise her and everything's okay again at the end we do get like a small tiny storyline going on in which the daughter of the two paranormal investigators seems to be getting haunted by this doll but that goes nowhere so um, and then the ending is this cool little trinket that they used in the house to see the ghosts. Um, he put it away in like a basement full of... Um, Paranormal junk. Yeah, I want to say, what does Dexter call his trophies? Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Their little trophies of all their paranormal stuff, and then we see that the doll is not in her case, and then the film ends. The trinket is a little music box, but it's, it looks like a circus tent. And it has and you, a mirror. You, you lift it up, um, there's a mirror with a swirly thing, and the idea is you're supposed to look into it, and by the end of it you can see um, the boy standing behind you. Yeah, it's got a little lever which you turn to get the music to play. Yeah. Is his name Toby? No, I don't think so. You're thinking of paranormal activity, I think. Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure what well, the boy is. But then it's not just used for the boy, is it? It's no, no, it's not, it's not really a massive plot point anyway. Yeah, but no, it's but, cool. um, it's used on the mother as well, who uh, hanged herself. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because we get shown. Um, so, yeah, that's the synopsis. Um, I really enjoyed this film when I saw it in the cinema. This is the second time I've seen it. Um, and the second time I see it, I see some of the problems. Um, oh. Yeah, which is a shame because it's done by the same director of Insidious 1 and 2, which I kind of, as you saw in the review, I kind of enjoy with Insidious 1 and 2. This one, it's kind of two different films, I thought. Like, the first half was really creepy and ooh, sort of things. But quite subtle and not. Yeah, really. and then the second half, there is no subtlety. And yeah. I think there is a lot of stuff used that in today's standards, it looks really cheesy. Like when the girl was getting dragged around the front room. No, oh, that's horrible. That is horrible. Really? Yeah, like a few threads of hair, a few bits of hair go up and the next thing half her hair's been pulled off. Like, yeah, so yeah. I just thought it looked really cheesy. It's just like, awful. Looks all CGI'd, I thought. The only part I thought looked horrible was right at the end of the movie when um, the mum who's possessed is sort of going outside for the first time because she's like, it's worked basically, and she's cold and bruises, and she gets into the sunlight and the bruises disappear, but it's oh, like, yeah, it it's so like a boof, it's gone kind of thing, and it's like, that's. And then, like, when the, she's getting exercised and the chair floats up, I thought that was so cheesy. It was so. And I'd like to say that. The first half of the film, as you said, was really subtle. Yeah. Yeah, the mum was apparently going to get possessed, but the only things we saw from the possession were the bruises, and then all of a sudden she was throwing up blood, and then, bang, she was completely possessed, she was insane, Some she was mental. Some woman was on top of her just throwing up into her mouth. Yeah, and it was, it was so sudden, wasn't it? I mean, one minute she was fine, and then the next minute she was complete devil incarnate. It, mm. There was no middle ground at all, and I, I just thought... Wow, that just came out of nowhere. <laughs> you know. Escalated quickly. Yeah, yes, it did. And she was like, Rawr! and everything. And it was just, and like when she was 
puking up blood in the sheet and that. It was just so much so quickly. There were a few awesome things that didn't really matter for the film, but just looked incredible. There's one scene where one of the female um, paranormal investigators grabbing and washing off the line. Yeah, and then that's just this before. sheet, yeah, this white sheet blows away in the wind because it's like it's blowing a storm out there, and then it just hits this sort of shape of a person. Obviously, there's no person there; it's a ghost, but it hits and it forms the shape. Yeah, there were oh. some really cool bits. I mean, that and flies off into the window and then blows away again as just a person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd say that's it's like the first half of the movie, which yeah. is the good half of the movie. Like you had um, that really decent bit where the girl was walking through the house. And that all the lights were flashing off because they were meant to find someone. And then you looked at the photos back, and there was just someone there. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then um, yeah, the clapping. Yeah. The and clapping. the clapping was really cool. They played like a little clap game because this is meant to be set in the seventies. And um, they play. I I never played it, but like where is it Marco Polo? It's sort of like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, where you have to clap, and uh, but the woman's gone into the basement. And it's gone all creepy, and then all she hears is, "Would you play with me?" And then the clap. Now, I I like the clap bit. I wasn't much of a fan of the whispering of "Would you like to play with me?" I think it would have been a lot better if it was just the clap. Yeah. Because we would have got the inside thing rather than having to hear the boy go, "Would you like to play with me?" Sort of I thing. I guess so. You know, and um, people get scared by like children voices. So like, yeah. A lot of people don't. I don't mind that obvious. Like I said, I think it was just where it was too much too quick. It was like really subtle and then all of a sudden it was raw. Like, for instance, I didn't mind the bit, you know, when the goofy cop, um, because like, if you watch Insidious, you know that there's got to be a couple of comedy characters in there. You've got the goofy cop who was, didn't believe and he saw like this maid that had cut herself and then she sort of jumped out and went, look what you did to me. I didn't mind that. That was like the jump scare that yeah. you expect. But then when it was like her full demon possessed, even like when she grabbed her head and she was like exercising her, even that felt too much. Like Yeah. You would have thought it also, because in, earlier in the film you showed that when she last did it, she got taken over sort of by the demon. Yeah. You would have thought it would have affected her. Like yeah. She was just standing there saying, remember this Do you memory. not think that um, any sort of exorcism scene, apart from the exorcist, is going to look corny, though? Do you not think? Well... well I'm a bit biased, but I, I don't know. I mean, do you think that it ever looks no, I think okay? that I think there are good examples. Like, for instance, um, you guys didn't make it all the way through it, but the exorcism in The Exorcism of Emily Rose is actually really good. Because it's not her whole face changing and everything like what happened in this. It was more roaring and she okay. spoke in like five different languages at the same that. time we didn't get through it because it's late night yeah no, but like i think um i'm spoiling it for you lot sorry but like i think at one point she speaks in five different voices at the same time you know that oh. sort of exorcism is really cool and obviously the first exorcist but like when you've got an exorcism and the whole face changes you know to become yeah. the ghost sort of thing it's like i mean like the top. Yeah, like in The Exorcist, her voice was, her face was changed the whole time, wasn't it? She turned green and everything. Whereas in this one, she only changed like right at the end, and the whole like blood pouring down and everything. It was just too much. I just felt it was way too much. It was too, it was trying too hard. I really enjoyed it. I like. I think it. I, I like the film. I like the film. I mean, it doesn't help that it feels like Amityville. Mixed with The Exorcist. No, mixed with Haunting in Connecticut wanted to be this movie. Yeah. I think. It was set in Connecticut as well. Yeah. Well, Haunting in Connecticut was before this movie. It was, but I'm saying this is how good Haunting yeah. in Connecticut should have been. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it felt a lot Amityville. I, I liked some yeah. of the cool little bits. I mean, like I said, I really like the director. I really like Insidious. But James Wan. James Wan. It's a direct saw, which is... Uh... Yeah, one of the... Was it the first saw or one of the saw? Quite a lot of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Insidious. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, there are a lot of good things about this film. It's just, yeah, it's just a few bad things as well. I love all the little touches where um, she's going, the um, investigator's going outside and she sees the person on the hanging the tree and... Oh, and her husband's just standing yeah, inside it. The birds, ah, it's like the birds, actually. Um... 
are all like flying around the house and hitting the windows, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, they're it's a little, they're so discreet, like, there's no need to be overly dramatic about every little thing that happened. And they didn't make it into a big deal. Maybe they should have done, I don't know. But I like the fact that horrible stuff were happening, but it wasn't, they weren't overreacting, I don't think. No, that was the, that was the good thing about the, the film. I mean, like, for instance, you, if I remember correctly, um, you had the guy standing near the tree, didn't you? And then there was the hanging body. But you didn't see the whole body, you only saw the feet yeah. hanging. And that little touch, rather than showing us the whole body, was making it creepier. It makes it scarier. Hitchcock. Yeah, exactly. That sort of thing. And like, and we didn't even go over the glaring thing that even in the cinema miffed me. And that's the fact that the, this film begins and ends about this evil doll. Annabelle, but, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but this evil doll had nothing to do with this film. So in other words, this film may be the first one, but it's a prequel. They're building to the second one, which I don't mind you building up foundations for a, a second, but, but it, it, you, you don't... shouldn't make a, and then may, you shouldn't spoil the first movie just to make a good second movie. Exactly. It's a bit, I, I still loved it, but I understand it's a bit frustrating because that doll look, looked awesome and it really creepy and I want to see more of it. Yeah, I do but want to see more of it, but you don't, yeah, you don't, like, at the beginning go, this is about this doll, this film is going to be about this doll. Then you're halfway through the film going, well, what's going on it's with like that doll? It's like introducing the main character and then going, oh, yeah, see you later. Exactly. Really and, not only, and not only that, mm. halfway through the film, we were shown this doll again, mm. as yeah. if to say, this doll is important. And then at the end, it was, yeah, this doll's not here anymore, so it's important for the next film. The daughter of the paranormal investigators, um, she ends up um, locked in a room and being kind of having a... With a person which we don't actually see. Yeah, it's a, a no, ghost. It's, I mean, it's some sort of... Yeah, yeah there's something going on with their There's something daughter. sat there with the doll, um, and she's trapped in this room, and they're just rocking, they're just looking at her, but they, you know it's menacing, you know they mean harm. Yeah. But um, she manages to get out. And, and that, that, that was a bit over the top, that bit, and the chair just starts flying at her. That whole bit was over the top, because yeah. if you think about it, this daughter wakes up, She's walking through the house, and all the way, because it's creepy anyway, she's calling for her mum, she's calling for her dad, she's calling for her nan, who's meant to be looking after her, mm. yeah? And it does. It takes until she's locked in a door, halfway across the house, screaming at the top of her lungs for her nan to wake up. And even then, she was slow. Even yeah. then, the mum and the dad got there, who were outside driving to the house before the nan. Worst babysitter ever. She was awful. You know, geriatric babysitter. Fucking awful. Like, how did she not hear her? She was screaming and shouting the whole time. That bit was just built to not only hype the next film, but to give you this extra thread of a different story it that had nothing to do with it. It was supposed to be a warning for the... Um, the psychic woman. The psychic people, yeah. And then it just sort of disappeared. It went nowhere. Yeah. And that was annoying. Very annoying. And... Like there, so you can definitely see if you like your horror, there are definitely homages to other horror films, like like you said, the birds. Right. Um, and what was that? What was that um, haunted house one we watched, where it was the ball bouncing down the stairs? I can't remember what it was. It was meant to be one of the scariest films of all time. And we didn't think it was that scary. It's a very old one. Yeah, where it was like the black and white, wasn't it? No, it was like um, the disabled wheelchair as well was a big part of it. It was like a metal disabled wheelchair that was part of it. Mitch, what was it? No. It, it was something... Yeah, I can't remember. We're ruining the video trying to think of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then um, I guess you could perhaps say the the doll could have been either Chucky or um, I'd say more Poltergeist with the clown doll sort of thing. I mean, there were some good bits in this film. I'm not going to completely say Definitely it. think you should see it. Yeah. If, especially if you like it, yeah. Insidious, especially. Um, you guys got ratings? I do. I'll go first, because you always go first, and I'm always not copying you. Yeah, that's fine. So, have my opinion first, which is... I think yours is going to be higher than mine, anyway. Oh, uh, I think it might be. Um, I'm going to go nine. Whoa. I really, I really enjoy this film, mm. I really do. Yeah? I don't think there's much wrong with it. I think it's a shame that they've mentioned a lot of stuff about this doll, but all I can say is the second one would better be amazing. Like, yeah. I'm going to annoy you with a half. I'm going to go seven and a half. Mm. Okay. What was that? <laughs> I don't know. The first time I watched it, it was probably a nine, but I've been watching it again. You can pick a lot of holes in it. It's just a bit annoying. 
Yeah, you can definitely pick a lot of holes. Mm. That's the reason why I'm going lower than all of you. I'm gonna go for six, six out of ten. I really, oh yeah, I really enjoyed it in the cinema, which is such a shame. Yeah, cinema. it was so mm. good in the cinema, but then watching it the second time around, like I said, it's like two completely different films, and the cheese. There's a lot of cheesiness. There's a lot of. I mean, like I said, I'm still annoyed at the whole Annabelle thing. You don't, you don't build. A uh, first film around what's going on in the second film. It has to be subtle. It has to be seamlessly done. You know, that's the reason why. I mean, Amazing Spider-Man did it well. Um, you know, Dark Knight managed to do it. Batman Begins managed to do it well. Why couldn't James Wan yeah. do it? You know, mm. so yeah, I was mm. quite disappointed the second time I watched it. Wow. So yeah, six out of ten. Fair enough. Right, it's not my lowest review. So no, no, yeah. it's been a lot worse. That was Human Centipede. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's your favourite scary movie? Is it Scream? Hopefully. Because that's what's going on tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we're going back to Wes Craven. <laughs> we are, Sam. Yeah, and we're going to watch um, probably one of the most slasher films of all time um, in Scream. So, we shall see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Watch this one. Make sure you do. Because it was good. It's, it's definitely a good house horror it's film. It's better than this, eh? Well, we spoiled it for you if you haven't watched it yet, so you know what's coming. Yeah, don't worry. She's talking rubbish. Right, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> see, you tomorrow. see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.